Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and I want to say welcome back to another tea talk. Hi, it's not really a tea talk, but it's kind of a tea talk. To those of you that don't know what tea talk is, tea talk. How many times can I say that? Is actually a podcast that I have been doing, kind of here on this channel for the last few years through like video content. I do interviews with people sometimes. I talk about people sometimes. But within the last, talk about people. Talk, talk. Yeah, talk about them. Wow, you get the point. I've recently started uploading audio exclusive podcasts to my Tea Talk podcast, but today I'm actually going to be doing both. I am going to be uploading the audio to my podcast, so if you don't want to watch, you can go listen, but I'm also going to have the video here. So there are other topics that I've talked about on my podcast, like I mentioned. Um, I've actually discussed my struggle, my dealings with post weaning depression, which we're going to talk a little bit about uh, weaning today because like I mentioned on the podcast, I talked about what it was like going through post weaning depression. It was very, very severe. And if you're struggling with that, or you think something has been off for you emotionally, mentally, physically, and you're in the process of weaning, first off, I want to encourage you to go check out that podcast because, um, you know, I didn't really know when I started going through that, that that was a thing. I had an inkling, I knew my body was changing, and basically after falling down the rabbit hole and figuring this out, it's a thing. It's like a serious thing. So um, that's kind of the first thing. But then today, I wanted to talk a little bit more about weaning in general. I'm gonna take a sip. Because even after making that podcast, I mean, first off, it's not like I know for a fact all of you haven't heard that podcast, but on top of that, I talked more mostly just about the depression and what I dealt with emotionally, literally the week that my last letdowns happened. It was really within those few days where my last letdowns happened. And so is that ant about to crawl on me? Okay, no good. He diverted. Um, but today, I want to talk just a little more generally about weaning because I received a lot of questions about weaning in general. And I remember, obviously, I remember so long ago when I was going through this a few months ago, what like some of the questions and thoughts that I had, had in my mind about weaning. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and just kind of start taking off in terms of like weaning and just rattling and talking. You guys already know how I am. So first thing I want to cover is how do you know when it is time to start weaning and how do you actually go about weaning? Now, this is, I mean, they're both super debated, right? But I'm just gonna talk from my mind. First off, I think you know when it's time for weaning when you know, meaning every situation is very different. One thing that I've, I've learned in my long year of experience as a mother, guys, so listen to my long, my old wisdom, I have realized everyone has different advice for everything. And it's really good to listen to all of that advice and get the different tips and get the different perspectives really um, so that you can see kind of what you think people are kind of pitching in their perspective, weigh it out for yourself, discuss it with your husband, your family, and then kind of take it from there. But there are different perspectives on everything. I mean, even, let's just even talk about breastfeeding in general. In the States, in the US, um, you know, it's become, like breastfeeding has become less common as far as I'm aware. But even beyond that, outside of the US, to my knowledge, women tend to breastfeed. Oh no, are we already gonna have to move inside? I was waiting for like the lawnmower to start or the construction to start. Okay, so we uh, we had to move inside because there was a lot happening outside. I'm serious, there's there's noises. Someone is always either gardening, building, fixing something, whatever. There's always a lot going on around here. Okay, so jumping back in, like I was saying, breastfeeding ends at different times from what I'm kind of hearing and seeing. Um, it ends at different times around the world. So in the US, we tend to stop breastfeeding much earlier. So, so all of that, the fact that the US kind of does things a little bit differently, the fact that we're not, a lot of us aren't really living in the same type of maybe villages that people kind of lived in in the past. Communities are different, families are more separated. And so there's a lot of, I think, confusion around the topic in general. And so, you know, when to start weaning? It's up to your family, your body, your baby. Um, you know, I said this in the post-weaning depression episode that 
For me, I never actually set a goal for my breastfeeding. I pretty much just went into it. It's kind of funny. I, this is very much how my brain works. It was kind of the same reason why I never, one of the many reasons why I never got checked um, vaginally when I was pregnant. Like they never went inside of me to check because I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know how dilated I was. I had a feeling my body would let me know if something was wrong. And similarly with the breastfeeding, it was kind of this feeling of like, I don't want to have a goal because I want to go as long as I can. I had come to the place where I believed that breast milk is is far superior for the health of the baby. So I just felt like as long as I can go, you know, like if I can only go a few months, that's what I'm working with. If I can go a year, that's what I'm working with. If I can go five years, I mean, I don't know, not really, but kind of fantastic. And the way that it worked for me, the reason that I knew um, it was kind of exactly like I thought, to be honest. I literally woke up one morning and it had been stewing in my mind and my heart, you know, like I always knew like eventually this is gonna end, but wonder when. And I literally woke up one morning and I was just like, I'm done, I'm done. Now granted, being done for me still meant a couple more months. Like I woke up with that realization, realization back in December and I was not fully weaned, I wanna say till early March. So it took a few months. Now that kind of leads us naturally into the next question and thought I think that a lot of people have, which is how do you wean? How does that happen? How do you stop the milk? And it is really like, for me, it felt kind of like an art. Now, some some women naturally kind of dry up and, and a, some women, I was gonna say a lot of women, but it's different for everyone, have almost the opposite problem. They had a hard time, they have a hard time even making milk in the first place. So I know a few people that like, once they were done and they started to back off on their pumps, their milk pretty much just dried up. Now, even though I had to work so hard to make milk for my baby. Like literally, I never missed a pumping session. I never slept all the way through the night the whole time because I had heard from many women that did dry up that that was like the thing that dried them up. Like, oh, they accidentally slept one night through the night or through a pump and it was like all of a sudden they were drying up. And so I was very paranoid about making sure that I never missed a session. So I think maybe because of that, I had a little bit more of a difficult time weaning. Now, I wanna say that lightly because it definitely wasn't hard. Like I think my body pretty much did what I wanted it to do, but it took time. It wasn't something where I was just like, great, I'm done. Like, and I just kind of was able to skip a session here or there and it just kind of went away. And the way that I weaned, um, I took multiple different like tips and tricks that I heard and I kind of implemented them into my routine. And kind of the main things and the way to break that, the easiest way to break it down is I started cutting back everywhere. Meaning, I wanna say I was doing seven pumps a day. And so initially what I started to do is I cut it back to six pumps and that's in, that was in the daytime, plus I was doing one pump in the middle of the night at that point. Um, and so what I started doing is I started, I would cut it down to six pumps. And then the minutes that I would pump, guys, I would pump a lot because I felt like I had to pump a lot longer to use my LVs, which were my wireless pumps, in order to keep up with milk production. Now, I, side note, did customize my LVs with like pads and inserts to help them get as much milk out as possible and it worked and it was great and I was able to have that be my sole pump for those last few months of pumping, which was something that I had to do in order to keep up with pumping. I realized a few months in to pumping and using my Spectra, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to keep this up. If I don't figure out how to do a wireless pump, I will not continue to pump because it was so like, I don't know, all consuming to have like the cords going everywhere. It was like, I can't even, I couldn't even like cuddle with Logan while I was pumping. I couldn't do anything really. Um, so I had switched to the LVs and they were great and they worked, but it was long sessions. I would do 40 minute sessions, literally six to seven times a day. Now I say six to seven, even though I was like, oh, I never missed a pumping session. It's like, I was super specific, but also a little flexible in the sense that like, yeah, it was like six or seven. And so when I started weaning, I was dropping down to six or five, depending on the day. And then I was cutting the minutes off. So I would go from 40 minutes to 30 minutes. And all of these changes, I would keep each change in place for a few days to a week, depending on how my boobs felt. Because that's the thing, 
And just like how you can get mastitis when your milk is coming in because your boobs literally aren't used to making milk. I mean, there's a million reasons, right? You can get mastitis when your boobs are slowing down the process of making milk as well. And once again, there's also a lot of reasons for that. I never got mastitis when I started to breastfeed. And I wanna say that that was like, thanks to Dan, because if you know our story, Dan literally helped me when my milk was coming in by like milking me like a goat. I'm not even kidding. But then I also never got mastitis when I was weaning. And I think that that was due, well, partially genetics. Let's just be real here. I know women that have had multiple children and the far, like the more kids they had, their struggle with mastitis would become like more regular. So it's, you know, it's different with your age, your time, your life, you know, your current lifestyle, genetics, all of that. But I also feel like I have to let you know because I do, and you guys know how I am, I always think life is this combination of like actions that you, action steps that you take combined with, you know, God's plan like things that are just out of your control for whatever reason. So, but I don't think it's fair to leave either one out of the mix. So even though I do believe there are things that are out of your control, I think if you ignore the things that you can do, you're kind of setting yourself up for disaster. So I have to say in the mix of all of this, you know, I was particular about the timing. I was still continuing to massage my breasts as I was weaning, although the thing is, Unlike when you're trying to bring your milk in, when you're trying to get your milk out, you don't want to massage too much. So even though you want to make sure, you know, things are going and flowing and there's no like, I don't even know, backup, clogs, whatever, massaging actually increases milk production. So you, you want to kind of walk this fine line of like massaging the bare minimum to just kind of keep things flexible and flowing without like creating a bunch more milk. Um, now something else that I want to say that just popped in my head, I did not get my period the entire time I was pumping. In fact, I never got my period back until I was completely done pumping. So I actually just finished my second period that I've had back since having Logan. Um, but that first period, I mean, that was two years without a period between, you know, like when I got pregnant, having him, nursing. So I just wanna throw that out there too because I know as a mom, when you're gathering information on breastfeeding, it's like, that's something you're always wondering. Like, when am I gonna get my period back? What happens? I am one of the people never got my period back. I never spotted nothing. And actually these first two periods so far that I've had back have been my easiest periods that I have in like any memory. I don't even know. I mean like tiring, you know, like your life is zapped out of you when you're on your period, but nothing that crazy, like cramps, super mild, all of that. And I've actually heard that from some women who when they have a baby, some of them have said that their periods got worse afterwards but i've heard some women say it got better and so far two periods down feeling good so we can all cross my fingers our fingers and toes for me um okay so moving back on massaging you want to massage enough to keep things healthy healthy and blood flowing but you don't want to massage too much to where you're creating more milk flow and um milk production so yeah that is the the overview if i were to give just a general overview as to how i weaned that is how i did it i slowly cut everything down and i like i said was very paranoid about it to the sense or even to the point that like at the end um when we were actually visiting texas i was in that weaning process and it got to the point where i was only pumping once a day by that point and that was at night before i would go to bed and even when I was doing that, I was, I was, I'd gotten to the point where I was pumping five minutes. Like that is how much I went from pumping six, seven times a day, plus the middle of the night, 40 minute sessions in the day, 20 minute sessions in the middle of the night to cutting down to five or six, five sessions. And then my middle of the night went to like 10 minutes. And then I was cutting it to four sessions, three sessions, two sessions, cutting the middle of the night session, and then one at night. And so everything was cutting at the same time, the amount as well as the amount of minutes. And I held on to each cut and transition long enough to let my body kind of adapt and come down. Now, as I was doing this, my boobs, like they did have kind of that engorged feeling. My body kind of fought the weaning process and I get it because you know, you guys know I'm super woo woo wee wah about a lot of things. Like I like to think in some ways I have common sense. I live, you know, in like the world of natural law, if that's the way to put it. Um, but I'm also, I'm, I'm also a Christian. I'm a believer 
in that sense. But then I'm also super like hippy dippy in the sense that I don't think we know. I think there's a, so much we don't know. That was very dramatic, but I think it's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know. And so I'm very woo woo wee wah. What was I even saying? I had to like pause because I couldn't remember what I was saying, but I remember now about being woo woo wee wah. I get why my body fought the weaning process because this is where the woo woo wee wah aspect comes in. I didn't actually want to wean. So <clears throat> if the brain is split, half of my brain wanted to wean because it's hard. Pumping that often is hard. Having to keep your body, you know, up to the point of creating enough food for a 25 pound baby. And he was eating food. I mean, you guys know around six months is when we kind of started introducing food via like a baby led weaning type type way, letting him play with food. And then as I started weaning on a side note, which isn't a side note, I started, we started introducing more purees and really trying to get him more calories and nutrients in through his food so that my breast milk could kind of back off and being that, um, that place in his life of nutrition or whatever. I worded that weird, but you get the point. But so half of my brain wanted to wean. I was like, I'm so over this. I'm so done. I just want to sleep through the night. I hadn't slept through the night in uh, two years between being pregnant and then, you know, nursing him in the beginning and then switching to pumping and all of that. But then half of my brain did not want to wean and half of my brain still wishes that I was doing it now. And not only that I was just pumping, like I feel kind of guilty, honestly. Not only wishing I was giving him my milk, but also that I was breastfeeding. And you guys know that's kind of a separate note. I stopped breastfeeding like maybe two months in. The, the timeline's kind of blurry, but I wanna say it was two months in um, because of all of my chronic pain and body issues I deal with. And you know, dealing with a kid is an ordeal. No matter how many props I had, pillows, the breast friend, the little wraparound one, like no matter how many things I did, I was, it was hurting. My body was hurting. And so pumping for me was really like my, it was, it was a godsend. It was what I felt like I had to do because I felt like I could not breastfeed, but I desperately wanted to give him my milk. Because like I said in the beginning, I, and this is not due, no shame to anyone that's using formula. We had used a couple of bottles of formula, although we really tried to stay away from it just because I felt like if we started using formula, like I didn't want to, I didn't want to give up the breastfeeding because like I said, the literature that I've read, the talks that I've heard, the doctors that I respect have really convinced me that, that nothing touches breast milk. You will be fine if your kid's on formula. Like I was formula raised. Um, I want to say Dan was formula raised. Like, you know, you're fine. You got to do what you got to do. Everybody in life is dealt some crappy cards, if you want to call it that. Although that sounds like I'm slamming anyone who feels like they had to choose formula, which is not my heart or my intent. I'm just saying from the position of feeling like formula is not the best option, but if you have to do it, you know, or like me pumping, I don't feel like pumping was the best option. I feel like breastfeeding is the best option for a lot of different kind of reasons. Those were like different categories coming in, the motion that I was making into one. Um, many different reasons I think it's the best, but it is what it is and I had to do what I had to do for my life and our family unit. And the same thing goes for you as you're watching, but I don't think we do ourselves any service by you know, maybe lying to ourselves or avoiding information we don't wanna see because it's like we're sensitive to it. I think that to the best of our ability, the, if we can consume information, different perspectives, facts, all of that and then let it sit and then make our decision, I think that's the best route to go. So backing up, my body resisted weaning because I didn't want to wean. And like I said, I still don't want to be weaning. Honestly, Logan and Logan still tries to latch. Like even though he hasn't breastfed since he was like two months old, when we're in like having a really sweet time together and like giggling and smiling and happy, like when I give him his bath at night and he's just like, ooh, and hugging me and loving on me, Oftentimes he'll lay his head on my chest and get so cozy and then like maybe I'll start singing to him and he'll almost start like falling asleep and wanting to latch and it kind of breaks my heart like I've had to do some mental gymnastics to calm myself down because I feel kind of bad like I'm holding out from him 
But that's also just kind of like, you know, I say that for two reasons. One, to give you the awareness that like, we can't all always do what we want. Sometimes you don't get what you want for different reasons. You have to choose what's right for you. But also I say that because I truly think that the part of my brain and my body that did not want to wean. And I'm saying like, not like, oh, I kind of don't want to wean. Like part of me really didn't want to wean and still, you know, if I really wanted to, I'm pretty sure I could get my milk production going again pretty easily because Logan, oftentimes, I was saying like sometimes, but let me just be real. Oftentimes at night when we take our nighttime bath shower situation, he goes for my boobs to either latch or because he thinks it's funny and he wants to start squeezing them and milk will still come out. So even though I am no longer having letdowns, which is great because letdowns are emotional or were emotional for me and in the process of of weaning and dealing with that post weaning depression, I am convinced that whatever hormones have to like, that's kind of my imitation of like a hormone domino effect <laughs> that happens in our bodies for lots of different things as women. Um, I'm convinced that that hormonal domino effect was causing a lot of like emotions. And so while I'm glad that that is, that's done, um, I'm pretty sure I could start it back up again if I started pumping. But, you know, it's difficult, dude. Breastfeeding, all of it. I mean, just having a baby is difficult. So yeah, I guess like kind of the main things I wanted to hit home in this video are one, weaning can be very emotional. You know, someone commented on my Instagram, like, can you talk about the emotions more because they're not talked about enough. And it's really weird because I was talking to my friend about this at the park the other day, which I say it like that because it was actually the video if you missed my day in my life video where we, it says like park day on it and moving update where I talk a little bit about what's going on. Holy Toledo, so much is changing so fast. Anyways, that day I was actually talking to this friend about this because, you know, it's emotional on two fronts. I think it's emotional in the sense that it's almost like out of your control to a degree because of hormones. I truly do believe that hormones affect how you feel about things. And when your feelings are affected, your feelings can affect your thoughts, you know, especially if you aren't able to really vocalize and bounce thoughts off of people. Um, someone that's maybe been there before, or a professional or a family member, your mom, whatever, um, those emotions can change your thoughts. So it's, it's emotional in the sense of like the hormones that feel out of your control, but it's also emotional in like the real, like, the real life interaction sense of like, I was talking to my mom about this too and she did not understand it, but the girl I was at the park with, she got it because she's breastfed. Whereas like my mom didn't, I mentioned to you, I was formula fed, but it's emotional literally to not have your baby on your boob anymore. Like I didn't even realize that, think about that, know that or understand that, that like having your baby on your boob is the sweetest. Now, let me back up. I just want to say, I love how I'm about to say it and then I got to give disclaimers, but it's true. I know that's not true for everyone. I know a lot of women deal with that postpartum thing with the hormones where it's almost like a feeling of disgust. And I actually want to say at the same time, I've even been there, which is why emotions are complicated, which is why my old therapist used to say, emotions come in sets of three. It's not really that specific. The point of the saying is that there are lots of emotions that go into things like getting married and maybe on that day feeling the happiest you've ever felt in your life, but also maybe feeling the most terrified you've ever felt in your life. So emotions can change, emotions come in, sets of three, lots of things. But speaking from like this one particular perspective I was about to say, there is nothing cuter than having a little person suck on your boob and give them the perfect, like customized nutrition for them. And as a mother, you have this motherly feeling of just wanting to care for your baby and knowing that they're being taken care of by food that your body is making for them, but then also having this moment of like this cuddly, soft, tiny, innocent, sweet, helpless little human right there safe in your arms getting fed is so sweet. And so giving that up is emotional besides all of the hormonal stuff. You know, it's such a short, 
it's such a short period in your life. Like sometimes I'm holding Logan and I'm just like, I try not to think about this too much because this is a Debbie Downer thought to think of while holding your kid. Like you really should just be living in the moment. But sometimes when I'm holding him, I'll just be sitting there thinking like, time is slipping through my fingers. Like you're slipping through my fingers right now. And you know, my period of breastfeeding him, at least for now, and we'll touch on that in a minute, is done. Like that season is over. And so it's very, like I said, even if you don't deal with actual like post weaning hormonal depression, it can just be a mental trip to have this time, have it be, you know, beautiful, hard, challenging, amazing, all of these things. And then it's done. And what I was talking to my friend about is like, it's also weird not only to see Logan try to latch and want to provide for him, um, but then also not want to, cause I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like that was the other thing about weaning was I really wanted my period back because I know that in theory, a lot of women can get pregnant without their period while they're still breastfeeding. I am 33 years old. And so there's part of me that is like, okay, we want more kids. Let's get on to the next, you know, child or like, I don't even know how to word that without sounding weird. We want to get the fertility road on the show, or show on the road again. And so I felt kind of like I didn't have time to experiment. I felt like I really needed to get my period back um, for that. And who knows if that's true, but the friend that I was with the park at the park the other day, we were talking about this. I'm jealous of all of my friends that have babies, my baby's age that are still breastfeeding. Like this sounds weird. And, and, and in the culture we live in, I realize that almost some of the stuff that I'm saying could potentially sound like gross to people, but this is my truth. And I don't think you can necessarily understand unless you're a mom, you've been there and then you have maybe a similar personality, but I'm jealous of my friends that have babies Logan, Logan's age or even a little older that still get to breastfeed. Like to picture Logan's cute little self, like getting to still feed him would be awesome. It would, awesome's the wrong word, a dream? I don't know, it's the wrong word. And like I said, that that might sound weird, but I wanted to be honest about that. And, and it might sound weird for multiple reasons. Like one, okay, well then start pumping and feed your baby again. You know what I mean? There could be that. Or it could just be weird. Like, like I said, if you've never had a baby and you've never had your boobs be anything other than like your own use or like your husband loving them, like it's it's just a different, thing to imagine, but it's so animalistic and beautiful and lovely. It has this side to it that I miss it. Now, I know at the same time, my friends that are still exclusively breastfeeding, um, their babies that are you know, however old or even Logan's age or older or whatever, with that goes hand in hand, all of the challenges, you know, and some of the reasons why I stopped pumping. Like it's very, very difficult. And those friends who say that it's the most amazing thing they've ever experienced will also say it can be the most annoying thing they've ever experienced because no one else can step in and feed them. And so, you know, life has its its trade-offs. But I also wanted to vocalize that because if you're out there feeling the same way and you've never heard someone say that before, um, I wanted to just say it that I miss breastfeeding my baby and I kind of feel bad. And I mentioned earlier that he's not breastfeeding right now and we'll see what happens. And what I meant by that was if and when both, God willing, that we get to have another baby at some point, Logan might be old enough to understand the concept of not biting. So that's yet another reason why I weaned. It was so many layered reasons, but one of them is Logan does not understand not biting at this point. And when we had tried to breastfeed, like in the weaning process, I was kind of debating. I'm like, no, maybe I just, maybe I don't wean. And I kind of started letting him try to latch again because he would just start doing it on his own. Like suddenly it was like he was a baby, he was breastfeeding, then he was bottle fed from being pumping, from pumped. And then it was older, then he was older, and all of a sudden he was crawling on me to try to like latch himself, which is something that he hadn't really done. He had just kind of eaten when he ate. And now in the shower bath situation, he regularly tries to feed off of me. And so I feel like all of my last few sentences were really jumbled together, but hopefully you guys get the gist. And so in my head, if and when we have another child, if Logan is aware enough to understand not to bite my nipple off, 
Um, I will totally let him have milk. I mean, right? Like you, you can have cow's milk at any age. I feel like if he wants milk and he wants to feed, like that would be so beautiful and awesome and good for him. But right now, that's not the situation that we're in. And I'm happy. I'm happy to not be pumping anymore, but I'm also sad. Um, but it's not the same thing as post weaning depression. And I just want to reiterate that again. Being sad about not feeding your baby anymore that way is not the same thing as post weaning depression. Um, I was, I was, it was really, really dark. And I don't, I mean, I don't even know what I can say on YouTube without getting uh, flagged, but I was concerned for my life. And I talk about that in, like, I didn't trust myself. I talked about that in the podcast um, and that was very much hormonal. And once I put that together, like, oh, all of those extreme dark thoughts happened the same week that my letdown stopped. And then I hit the internet and started realizing this was very common. Um, yeah, so there's so there are two separate things, but I just, I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to share. I hope that this helps some of you and helps you feel, maybe find words for things that you didn't have words for, or maybe be more prepared as to how you're going to wean. Because yeah, like I said, some people, it's it was really easy for them to wean. And like I said, I don't know, everybody is different, genetics are different. Um, but I think some of mine was mental. I think some of it was, you know, still being around Logan all the time. I think that affects your supply. Um, some of it was emotional and genetics, who knows, right? It's so much, but I just wanted to share all of that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I'm gonna go now. I literally only had one sip of my tea during this entire tea talk. If you did like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, um, liking it and even consider sharing it. I know that sounds weird. Like I feel weird asking people to share, not only because it's like, please share my video, but also because sometimes like, do I want to let people know I watch this YouTuber like random? But if you do, that really helps my channel as well. Like the engagement really supports it. And it also helps to encourage the growth of our community of like-minded people who I think are all pursuing a more holistic, natural, artsy, hopefully more homesteading kind of life. So I'm gonna go now. I have to work on some stuff, including moving forward on tasks with our move. My husband's walking in now, so this is perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. All right, bye guys.